Um, so recently, Iceland's gone against the global moratorium on whaling. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think this is? Well, it's a cultural thing. I mean, Iceland has been, been whaling since before anyone even thought about looking for the United States. Yeah. You know, it, Iceland was first settled in 874, um, and whaling in Iceland is a, a means of survival. Um, there's been, and I don't know the specifics on this, but mm -hmm. since Iceland had slowed down on its whaling, it's, it's caused um, depletion in the, in the fish industry because the whales are eating all of the fish right. and the, and, well not the whales are, but the Icelanders are eating more fish mm -hmm. because they're not having the whale. Right. Um, and uh, in Iceland we use every part of the whale. Right. It's not just something that we use for the choice cuts of it. Right. Well, what do you say to those who who are against whaling? Well, stop killing cows. Yeah. You no, know? yeah. it's 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 a cultural thing, and yeah. it's it's not something that Iceland has started doing recently. Right. It's something that they've done forever, right. and it's yeah. it's a, a, a again a means of survival. And yeah. they don't do it for sport; sure. it's for food. Sure, sure. Have you had a whale whale steak? I've had I've had a whale carpaccio and whale blubber. Mm -hmm. I ate well carpaccio when I was there last year. Yeah. Some, some actually, some friends from Seattle were happened to be in Iceland while I was there, so we went out to dinner, and he had whale, so I tried a bite of his. Interesting. And I had whale blubber at uh, Fotobloat. Uh, can you just is it? Um, can you compare it to like any other type of meat? Is it like a red meat or? A it's very, very, very deep, deep, deep red, and I it imagine. tastes like a mammal that lives in salt water. I imagine, yeah. That's just very gamey and very huh. of the sea. Right. And the blubber is gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's very unique. It's very, it tastes like, it's it's like citric acid, like citrus, but without the sweet, almost sweetness huh. of it, and it's very, it's a granular fat. And people eat it a lot there, or is it sort of a delicacy? Not a lot, yeah. It's, okay. well, not so much a delicacy. Um, like blubber, any type of fat is used as energy mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, also warmth mm -hmm. too. Right. So um, there's a, lo a lot of fat in foods. Do they still use blubber for uh, different economic reasons? Like they used to use it for like lamps and stuff. Yes. No, we have electricity. So, yeah. Well, I mean, but like for other other. <laughs> Sure, but like, is there other uses for it? I guess that they still use it for. You know, honestly, I don't know. Okay. Hi, how's it going? Hi. Hello. This is our group. We're going to do a quick introduction here, and then we'll uh, start our uh, uh, reflection. Okay. Um, my name is Min Ra. I'm Tita. My name's Derek. Katie. Mia. Hank's back there. And then and Frank, Frank Frank is right back there doing uh, some camera work. He'll be right out. So uh, let's start. Um, well, I'm going to be talking about uh, the roles and um, identity that was a part of uh, Virna's uh, interview. I thought it was a, a real pretty interesting thing to see it in real life applications. And uh, I think Virna did a good job of explaining that when you guys said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the the identity she had with her American side uh, and her uh, Icelandic side was uh, very insightful and it um, it was very interesting to hear the values and uh, the norms that she had culturally um, with her American identity and her Icelandic identity and uh, if any guys. I, I felt especially how her name changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to reflect that she oh, was yeah. an outsider right. or that she was a Icelandic but raised outside of Iceland and how that reflects in the name that her family called her. Yeah. 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 I like the foreign Birna. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's hard to say. It's definitely hard to say. It's an amazing language. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree with you. I also think it's a, it's a pretty healthy way to look at the world to have two different uh, cultural identities. You see both sides. Both yeah, necessary. definitely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Cool. And then stemming off of that, um, regarding uh, norms, values, um, uh, one of the cultural norms that I uh, that she had had brought up, and I thought was very interesting, was um, the difference in uh, marriage and their uh, meaning of marriage. Um, uh, for one, I'm, I'm Cambodian, and my parents. Um, uh, from their background, they had an arranged marriage, and in contrast to um, Birna's um, uh, Icelandic culture um, and the cultural norm of, of uh, her country there is the fact that marriage is not um, uh, an issue at all. You, you know, it's not required. Um, you, you know, can, 
get together and have kids and never get married and you know still be able to um, have that freedom whereas um, for the Cambodian culture you know um, with, with what my parents ha had to go through um, they were put together never dating is not okay um, uh, kids before marriage is not okay and so you know they were uh, suited together at the age of 19 and um, even though they've been married for over 40 years it's the fact that they had no choice in um, who their partner the life partner would be and so I thought that was very very you know uh, interesting to hear the fact that you know that's not at all grained into you or drilled into you um, in the Icelandic culture um, the fact that it's it's carefree and it's uh, dependent on you know uh, your f free choice so I thought that was pretty cool yeah well I was uh, especially interested in the uh, discussion about whaling and um, how um, I, the Icelandic culture tends to um, they've went against the grain on the moratorium um, of, on whaling and and the way they justify it um, I think is kind of a value-laden justification in that um, they believe that uh, the cultural heritage of whaling that goes with it is so important um, um, that they should be able to continue to do it despite what the rest of the world thinks. And um, so they believe that their assumption about the world is just that cultural heritage is, heritage is, is extremely important and is, is extremely valued and that um, whaling is, uh, is very unique to them and, and, and they should be able to, to do it. So um, I think that's pr pretty much... Yeah. Well, my favorite part of the interview was learning more about their tradition of the elves. So oh, yeah, it was something very foreign to me mm -hmm. being raised as an American. So, and what really struck me was just the mastery and adaptive qualities in Birna's story about the elves, how when they're building a road, if things start to go wrong, when they're moving rocks and things are breaking down and they can no longer build, instead of just trying to master that and insisting the road goes there, they adapt and they'll build around the rock to respect their culture and respect the elves and how they will try to master the land but adapt as the land right. needs it and as their cultures need it. And that really struck the chord with me. Yeah, absolutely. I was uh, intrigued by the overall collective worldview that uh, Icelandic culture has. Mm -hmm. And um, I love the part when Birna was talking about women being pregnant and uh, raising their children. The whole family was involved and in fact was expected for the family to be involved. Uh, in addition to the government providing the resources for them to be able to effectively raise their child and to be loved and contained within a family union. Yeah. I thought that was amazing. That was yeah. yeah, and speaking of narratives, I mean, just all those stories, all the stories you told, uh, a lot of people can relate to it. For me, uh, the superstition about the elves, mm -hmm. or, uh, to them it's not a superstition, to them right. it's culture. It's sure. more, sure. it's not even, it's not, uh, it's... What do you call this? How did she it's it? solid. Yeah. She said, yeah, you don't even think about it. You don't she, think, how did she exactly. say yeah, it? Yeah, it just is. It just is, yeah. Yeah. which is like... There yeah. are just elements. When yeah. with superstitions, there's, you know, in our superstitions, Filipinos, like there's doubts, you know, people will doubt, eh, hey, that's not true, you know, Filipinos, but to them, it's reality. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now that just made, and especially that rock thing where yeah. they like move it, around the rock. Yeah. yeah, like it can't not be. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. That, yeah. that, that really interested me how people who have that kind of mindset, it's... Uh, very different from uh, America here, American people, where there's some people that really doubt it and some people that for, for them they live it kind of thing. So I thought that was very interesting. And I think in the United States we have values or, you know, we, we have those kind of narratives like our um, cultural history really, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, we, there's a lot of people that hold really true to some values mm -hmm. that, that um, and stories and the way history is and, and it's like it just is. That's just the way it is and, that, and so... It, I think, I think we can relate it to, to the states, too. So. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, pretty true. Yeah. Well, this was fun. I had yeah. a lot of fun working with you guys yeah. and learning mm -hmm. about Iceland, and mm -hmm. I learned a ton about yeah. a culture yeah. I've Same never here. even really thought of before, mm -hmm. except for when it came on the news every now and then. Yeah, yes, yeah. it was great experience. Yeah. And yeah. I would especially like to thank Tita for putting yes. together the space yes. for us to do this. Yes. Let's Yay. thank Tita. Let's, well, let's thank uh, Evan. Yeah. Yeah. Evan. Thank you, Evan. You're the man. See ya, hi.